Welcome. Happy Tuesday. Today is the beginning of the days that we prepare to go and vote. And uh, as women, we can do it. Melinda Mullinax is joining me and the amazing Bay Cagle. <laughs> who sang the national anthem for Melinda. Do you remember who she sang for? She sang for President Trump. She did, and 100,000 other people, yeah. and 100,000 more people, <laughs> and 100,000 more people. But today, before we start, we want to talk a little bit about we are the face of America. You are the face of America. You are the face of America, and we think about when we look at each other and we think, well, they're Democrat, they're Republican, they're independent. No, we are the face of America. And America is made up of many nationalities. Um, my grandparents were from Scotland and um, pretty stubborn and bullheaded. <laughs> and that might be where I came from and why I'm the way I am. And um, on Friday, I had a little jolt of memory. I could have been a Democrat because my grandparents and my great-grandparents were all Democrats. If I were allowed to vote for John Kennedy, I certainly would have. And the day, I think the greatest day of pride for my country was on Friday when RFK Jr. joined President Trump on the stage. Now, if you didn't cry, did you cry? I cried. I cried uh, like a baby. I was on the verge of crying. I was I sort of speechless, Sherry. I was sort of like, I know this is, I know this is more than just a historic moment. This is like a monumental historic moment. It I, is. I, I was speechless. Yeah. Well, Melinda, what, what yes. were your thoughts when that happened? Because we are the face of America. Right, and I, I just thought, I never, I never thought that we would ever see the day because the, the Kennedys are such a prominent family and have been for the Democratic Party. They're like Party. royalty. Yes, and yes. And royalty in America, that's as close as we got to having a Princess Diana. We had, Prince, yes. we had beautiful Princess Jacqueline, yes. And I got to see Princess Diana, actually. Did you? Yes, How for, cool for the royal it? wedding when I was over there in wow. England. Yes. Wow, wow. Yes. So on Friday, did your heart kind of splutter and you were like, wow. I was excited. Wow. I was actually at work, so I had to wait until I went on break to, to see that uh, because I knew it was coming and I, I, I felt like it was coming. I felt like he's going to go for Trump. But, you know, anything can change in those mm -hmm. last few minutes. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I mean, I, I, I felt really excited because I feel like uh, when someone changes from Democrat to endorsing Trump, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's moment. That is, that's, that's a big moment. That's a big um, moment. And to, uh, on Monday's program, I did a program about no matter where you are in life, you can change. Yeah. And um, it was about a gentleman who was raised. He, he moonshined, he hauled liquor all of his life. He was the gentleman who the Dukes of Hazard was written about. And he took that pretty wild, crazy life and turned it into ministering for people and brought so many people to know Jesus. So no matter where you are in life today, we are Americans. <laughs> and we can turn it around. We can change the way you look at things. We can change. One of the things that's really alarmed me and made me very, very nervous about this election as I have so many friends who said, well, my mom said she's going to still vote that way because they've always been a Democrat. Right. That scares me to death. Right. Now, her mm -hmm. mom will only be here a couple more years because of her age, but she has four generations of grandchildren and great-grandchildren behind her. That's who I care about. Mm -hmm. I don't care about mm -hmm. me because I'm old. I, and one day, y'all are going to be standing at Roper Funeral Home going, Lord, don't she look <laughs> old. <laughs> <laughs> and and I am. And, and I remember... I sent RFK a message, and I get cold chills every time I think about this. I was standing as close as you are to RFK and to Jacqueline Kennedy at Martin Luther King's funeral. Now you think about that was like the greatest moment in my life for historical things. So to have been that close to RFK, and then eight weeks later walking home at night and mama sitting on the couch with tears pouring down her cheeks and she said, they have shot our Attorney General, they have killed Robert Kennedy. And I know when I saw RFK Jr. step on the stage with Trump, I, I got cold chills thinking about where this man came from with no father in his life because violence in America 
and criminalization in America took his father out mm -hmm. because we all know that the the assassination of John and Robert Kennedy were truly they were victims of the system and mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with somebody from a foreign country it was the system right and we all know that and and I think that the fact that RFK Jr. has now joined Trump what if we got answers to those two assassinations? What if we really saw the truth in America? Right. right. Would that not be amazing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely that, crazy. Um, I, I thought of some of that same concept. Now, I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's for, saying I'm the oldest. Well, I wasn't I'm here, the oldest. I wasn't yes. here for, for JFK. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, my husband and I were talking about we would have been literally just toddlers mm -hmm. when uh, Robert Kennedy was shot. So, and when Martin uh, Luther King was shot. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, two months apart. So yeah. we would have literally been toddlers about that. Mm -hmm. But I have thought back about um, just my childhood and that was a tense time mm -hmm. and I could tell it was a tense time it wasn't just because it was tense just for our singular family mm -hmm. that was a tense time you had people um, coming back from Vietnam and mm -hmm. not being welcomed oh yeah um, shame on America and, and mm -hmm. uh, for a nation to go through having two assassinations mm -hmm. Martin Luther King and RFK uh, so close together mm -hmm coming off of the heels of having Robert Kennedy, I mean, uh, John Kennedy shot years before, that was just a tense time. Mm -hmm. And I think that our generation, the young children, I think we kind of knew, but we didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, we were little, mm -hmm. but we kind of knew. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that's some of the memories that I had attached as I'm seeing RFK walk up on stage. Oh yeah. I was like, what the heck? Oh yeah. You know, this again, this, um, no, nothing is going to be hidden. It mm -hmm. may be hidden from us for a period of time, but eventually the truth comes out. Mm -hmm. And I suspect you're right, that we're going to, we're going to finally learn the truth mm -hmm. Although lots of people have suspected that we didn't, we weren't told the truth right. about those assassinations. Any one of the three, we mm -hmm. weren't told the truth no. about. No. But we're coming closer to learning the truth. Mm -hmm. And part of the way that we know the truth is what we have seen in the the election cycles that involved Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're we're seeing some shenanigans pulled mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Okay, I know that there were some shenanigans pulled back in the 60s with some elections. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but we're seeing some shenanigans that have been pulled, uh, just the overall meltdown mm -hmm. that took place with the Democrat Party when Trump won mm -hmm. uh, the presidency. Oh, yeah. Uh, that we had never seen before. And that, that told me that kind of behavior hinges on something had already been planned mm -hmm. sure. and it was so surely sold mm -hmm. and that it backfired and there was a, a lot weighing on mm -hmm. that the plan didn't come through the way it was expected. That's right. That's, mm -hmm. that's the kind of meltdown that we had. And then just the whole lawfare that uh, has been waged against Donald Trump from the time he went into office, mm -hmm. the number of organizations that were created for no other reason than to create chaos mm -hmm. for his administration. So what does that, what does that tell me? That they're tells afraid me, of him. Yeah, that tells because me they're afraid of him. Because he's going to uncover the truth. And, and yeah. Granny Harris was four feet ten and could spit further than any man you ever saw. <laughs> and she told us over and over and over, the truth will stand, the truth will stand. Yes. The truth will come out, the truth will stand, yeah. the truth will stand. It will stand. I don't know how many people are going to be taken down as we're trying to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. And when we think mm -hmm. about that, we want to share some photos because, you know, I lived through the John Kennedy assassination. I lived through the Martin Luther King. I lived through the Robert Kennedy. I kind of thought we were over that stuff sure. and still I'm, I'm coming out of work. My phone rings. One of my kids said, don't worry, he's alive. I said, what? And they said, don't worry, President Trump has been shot, but he's alive. And I mm -hmm. honestly, I was like right. this because I thought you have got to be kidding me because I lived through those three assassinations and they said, he's alive. Thank God he's alive. But the media forgot 
that mm -hmm. there was an assassination attempt. And now that the Secret Service has had people get laid off and, and uh, probably demoted and I don't know what else, they have admitted that number one, they didn't even give RFK security, Correct. period. His father mm -hmm. was killed in America and they no. did not even give this man security. And they gave President Trump about a third of what was needed and it was haphazardly spread over nothing. Yes. And, and although President Trump continues to praise the Secret Service, I know some of them were truly doing their jobs. Some of them were like, oh, very lax, very, very kind of <laughs> laid back. Why right. wasn't the roof covered? Why wasn't this? Why wasn't that? They're not talking about that anymore. Mm -hmm. All they're talking about is the joy and the happiness. Well, there's no joy and happiness in America because I go to the grocery store about three times mm -hmm. a month and it is not joy, it is not happiness, it is depression. And when they give all these figures, it makes me so mad. You know, did you ever see Elvis shoot the TV? You know, they said late at night when something was on, he'd, he'd shoot the TV. Yes. <laughs> well, I've, I've thought seriously about shooting the TV, except I'm not ready to buy a new TV yet. Right. But, but when I watch these stupid graphs that they show about groceries have gone up 10 to 20%, no, excuse me, excuse me, uh, pork roast, Pork roast, 99 cents a pound. It's now 2.89 a pound. Mm -hmm. My favorite, once a month, I always bought chuck roast and I always made, I'd make uh, pot roast for lunch and then I would have the leftovers and I'd make vegetable soup. That's yeah. just my routine has been all my life. When President Trump was in office, it was 2.29 a pound. Today it is eight ninety five a pound. Now is that twenty percent no. math major? No, that's way over You're 20%. the economics. You're the <laughs> economics girl. Mm -hmm. They're lying to us. They're lying, and then we mm. show up at the grocery store, and you're supposed to fall for this crap. Right. Right. It's crazy. Do they really think we're this stupid? Yes, they do. Yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. And they assume. And and I got my heart broken last night because I was visiting with somebody, and they said we have one person in our family that's going to vote the wrong way. And I said, well, I have one too, but I've not given up because my inheritance to them will be gone if they vote the wrong way and they'll get zero. So they mm -hmm. probably need to think about financially. How are the old people going to make it if we continue with the high grocery right. prices, if we continue with the high gas prices? If we continue with the cost of living as far as an apartment, rent, owning a home, mm -hmm. um, our insurance has gone up, my mortgage went up over $100 a month because my insurance went up. Mm -hmm. Everything's going up except mm -hmm. the money that we're getting. And when we look at the person who's been in office now three and a half years, I can only flash back to the second term of Obama-Biden. And you know these people and I know these people. I had to file bankruptcy, mm -hmm. lost everything I had been self-employed all of my life, lost everything I had, sold my house for pennies on the dollar because the appraisals flipped around. My house that had $526,000 value when I built it was currently at $250,000. Mm -hmm. And so the bank looked at the mortgage and said, well, you'll have to get more income to keep your mortgage because it's a renewable mortgage. And I said, well, what will I do? Well, there were no jobs. There were no jobs, there was no money. And when I filed bankruptcy, I will never forget the moment. The gentleman who did my bankruptcy reached around behind his desk and there was a stack about this high and he patted it on the top. He said, don't worry and quit crying. A lot of your friends are in this stack. Okay. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just the self-employed. It was the business owners. It was the people laying off people. The second term of Obama and Biden took America down. Mm -hmm took America down and I was part of it. And I had truly been self-employed since I was 23 years old. So it was very, very hard to handle. And you know, I had this beautiful home, I had my heated pool, I had everything I ever wanted and life was good mm -hmm. as long as my income was good. But when the income failed and there was nothing I could do, I had four jobs and each one was a part-time job mm -hmm. and I still couldn't get them to renew my mortgage because I needed $400 more a month income and then I could have kept my house. I couldn't get that $400 a month income. I could have been a pole dancer. <laughs> that would have been fun. <laughs> you know, I, I was desperate. Right. And so I sold my house for pennies on the dollar because the affair of the nation had brought the values of homes down. 
Okay, your greatest wealth you will ever gather is the value you have in your home. Mm -hmm. I, I would guess that your parents have $29,000 in everything they own, and I know how much your parents own. Mm -hmm. Three houses and all that land. I'd say they probably don't have but about $29,000 in it today. It would bring mm, a million two. Probably right outside of Jasper, yes. Yeah, about a million two. That's their financial wealth. Now, if the economy fails, if we were to go into that second administration of what has happened to mm -hmm. America, the values will be gone. The values will be gone. And it will, it will turn on y'all like it turned on me. Because mm -hmm. when I got the letter from the bank and they said the newest appraisal is in on your home and you're underfunded. And I said, what does that mean? And they said, you're going to have to redo your mortgage and um, you're going to have to come up with a bunch of cash. Are you kidding me? I could barely come up with lunch money. And that's how it went. Mm -hmm. That's how it went. So when people ask me, why am I so crazy pro-Trump? I'm not pro-Trump. I'm pro-America. I am pro you and me and you. Yes. As a single person, I'd mm -hmm. say you are taxed to the max. Yes. You have no dependents that you can write off. Do you want two or three? I'll give you two or three. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Would you like them? You know, I'll keep my cat. I'm yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. We know that we are going to be taxed to death. We know that the businesses mm -hmm. are going to be taxed. Small business in America, um, IHOP shutting down stores, uh, Fuddruckers shutting down all the stores. Ruby Tuesday shutting down stores. So many places are shutting down stores. The reason they are, and, and I gotta do a shout out, I swear, Mike's LJ Restaurant, I don't know how they keep the doors open because they offer great food at great prices. The cost of doing business will take over America if we don't stop this madness. Right. We've got mm -hmm. to stop the madness. Right. How do we do it, Bay? Uh, you've got to get your heart right and you've got to vote for Trump. That's going to help tremendously. Is just how you vote. Trump, um, Trump, Vance, RFK, mm -hmm. and we have heard that there are going to be more joining yes. the joining the party, and yes, that's right. why we're we're dressed up today <laughs> for a party. It's a party affair, right? And it's also a local thing too, Sherry. I mean, I don't want to fixate so much on Trump that I forget that it's our local representatives, mm -hmm. our local senators, mm -hmm. uh, our local business mm -hmm. leaders that really affect our pocketbook. Sure. Um, so. They, we need to be watching them. Uh, we need to praise them when they do something correctly. Mm -hmm. We need to do that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's important that we keep an eye on when our representative goes down to the Capitol, when our senator goes down to the Capitol, we need to be reading some of those bills. Mm -hmm. We need to, to get back to them and let them know, hey, wait just a second. Mm -hmm. This bill that you're signing up for, whether it's mm -hmm. the mental health bill or mm -hmm. whatever, well, that's, you know, that's... It's funding that's, 10 uh, different things yes. that have very, very little to yes. do with mental health. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Or, or whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. uh, some things look really good on the front end. They've got the bells and the whistles mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, because so, they're trying uh, to. Oh, it's bringing jobs. It's bringing yeah. jobs. Well, they're okay. faking us out. Right, and so each one of us, you know, have our own uh, opinions about certain things that might get passed. But again, I just bring it back to, down to the local level, mm -hmm. and um, also, so you're voting locally that you want those conservative values, family friendly values, small business friendly values mm -hmm. to be uh, at the forefront, and. Um, at the same time, if you've got a choice where you might could spend a little bit more to help some local business mm -hmm. versus, well, I can go on to Amazon. Hey, I'm guilty of using Amazon, but I try to be conscious of, okay, it, even if it's a loaf of bread, mm -hmm. like you know, one of the, one of the bread companies here in in LJ, go support them. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. support these people that are trying to bring raw milk to the forefront. Go support them. Yeah. That's extremely important that we do that. Get your cabinets from a local cabinet maker. Mm -hmm. If it's at all possible, try to make a way to do that because mm -hmm. we've got to keep them alive. And if we don't keep them alive, then corporate, the corporatism will own us. Oh, the yeah. corporatism owns the state government, it seems like. Mm -hmm and it will eventually own us. And then mm -hmm. we have no power. Right, right now the, the people are losing the levers of power. Used to, we were the ones that sent the legislator to the state house 
or to you know with our agenda yes with, with our, our agenda, agenda. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but now if you've got corporate lobbyists coming in and they're so under the table you know giving incentives mm -hmm. for these representatives or senators to well you know you need to pass our little mm -hmm. you know pass our thing that means the people then have no say so in it. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's as though, I mean, have you had this happen lately mm -hmm. where a representative, a senator, a governor, you walk up and you speak to them and they kind of look at you like, well, we don't really know who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially if something, you know, a, an important lobbyist walks in and they're, mm -hmm. oh, okay, got to drop it here. I got to mm -hmm. go over there and hobnob. Right. Come on. It doesn't yeah. take long. Yeah. Study a little body language. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take long to figure out, you know, yep. where their where their bread's getting buttered on, and, and that's not the way America was mm -mm. built. No, that's no. not the way no. we were built. No. no. Well, to see the joining of forces on Friday, I honestly on Saturday I was so busy all day long with people coming in, people being positive, people smiling again. Mm -hmm. It was almost like this light bulb was turned yeah. on. And I had said the last 10 days had been really kind of weird, a little atmosphere going on and people are like, we're going to wait, we're going to wait, we're going to hold off until the election. We just can't make a move yet. We're going to wait. We're going to see how November 6th looks, not the 5th, but how the 6th looks. Mm -hmm. We're going to wait. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, okay, okay. And then Saturday, honestly, it was like a, I had a revolving door at the office. Right. It was constant, constant, right. all day mm -hmm. long. And people felt better. They sounded better. They were smiling, and I was like, wow. And, and I mean, everybody knows, um, I understand my family was Democrats, but the Democrat Party is not what it once was. Okay, yeah. Sherry, you just brought up something important, uh, and you, you said it in the beginning of the show, can people change? Yeah, yes. they can change. Yes. Uh, let's hope they, let's hope we've all. We've all changed. Yeah, let's <laughs> hope we all. Right. Are. And let's hope it's always for the better. Uh, my parents, I am satisfied, we didn't talk about politics. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Politics nowadays in my life is the result of my husband, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> and we <laughs> might say, <laughs> Bill is <laughs> right. Yeah. But, um, Bill would have been here today, but yeah. he had to go out of town. <laughs> because he has to conduct business. Yes, yes. With yes. small business owners, yes, okay? Yes, yes, yeah. So uh, anyway, so my family really never talked politics. And I, I'm satisfied, though, the way my dad supported Sam Nunn, the mm -hmm. way he supported Ed Jenkins. Right. I'm satisfied mm -hmm. there was a Democrat <laughs> somewhere yeah. at that table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my mom was talking about the fact that her grandparents, one was a Democrat and one was a Republican. Mm -hmm. And they lived right there close together. Mm -hmm. And so she said, we did not bring it up at the table. So I'm satisfied that's part of the reason it was a, it just wasn't something you talked about. Mm -hmm. There was a rule mm -hmm. you didn't talk about religion and politics, right? Right. right. But, but that wasn't talked about, <coughs> and it was for that reason. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when my great-grandfather married my great-grandmother, someone asked him, he says, well, did you, uh, is she a Democrat? And he says, don't, you don't have to worry about that. I've already taken care of that. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is the Democrat Party of even the 70s and the 80s mm -hmm. is not the Democrat Party that we're mm -hmm. looking at right now. No, and I no. want to say to anybody that's listening, if you think for one minute that your Democrat Party that you might be thinking about voting for right now, if you think that that's the same party, mm -hmm. please <laughs> stop what you're doing turn off CNN, turn off MSNBC, and just sit down and write down the things that you know right now that you, that you know in the last two or three years that the Democrat Party said that they supported. Mm -hmm. If they're rolling a, a bus out for vasectomies and abortions, and don't get me wrong, I'm, you know, birth control, that's your choice. I get that. Mm -hmm. I get that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those might be touch, touchy subjects. They're really touchy subjects. But in both of those subjects right there, ultimately what you're saying is, I don't want another child. Mm -hmm. Now, add that up in your head. If that's what you're for, if that's what your party is for, that's one of their major planks, mm -hmm. is to roll out a bus that says vasectomies, and abortions. What does that mean? 
I don't want more life. Mm -hmm. That's what that's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're cool with that, then you pull the lever, you punch the button, whatever it is that we've got to, to vote with at mm -hmm. that point. Right. You go ahead and pull the button for Harris. That's their major plank, vasectomies and abortions. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they said so. they were fully booked during the convention, <laughs> oh, which yeah. was very they, they had surprising no more, to me. No more space. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, here's the other issue that was brought up when RFK comes out there on, um, on stage with President Trump. Mm -hmm. The two of them started bringing up some health care issues that had not been brought up, not like they were when RFK came out or Junior came out on stage. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he mentioned was our children's health, mm -hmm. our young people's health. Okay, let's go back to the vasectomies and the abortions. Testosterone levels are dropping in our nation. Mm -hmm. They've mm -hmm. been following this for the last 20 or 30 years. Testosterone level is dropping in our nation. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. And Look at our food source. Yeah. Look at our food source. Yes. And so, the lobbying companies that are affecting our legislators at the federal level in particular, but also at the state level, the ones that are behind the big pharma, the ones that are behind a lot of the food companies, who are they backing? Do I need to spell that for you? It starts yeah. with a D. So yeah. again, if you're really confused about who to vote for, if you vote for the Democrat Party, you're definitely matter. voting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the, the party that is responsible for some of our health care issues, mm -hmm. the food mm -hmm. that we consume, the shots, the pills that doctors are putting you on, mm -hmm. and much of that is affecting our young <coughs> people's lives. Oh, yeah. Again, no testosterone, no children. Mm -hmm. That's the way that equates, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's too much masculinity for some people, mm -hmm. but it's the truth. Well, I don't know how y'all feel about the, um, the, the kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at the kids and the children today, they are a product of what we put in their bodies. And my great-grandchildren, their parents have chosen not to do any shots. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. doing any shots. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it means homeschooling, Christian schooling, whatever it means, no shots. And I'm so thankful for that because mm -hmm. we know people who had completely normal two-year-olds and then they got the shots and then they ended autistic mm -hmm. and all kinds of problems. Yes. So we know, we know mm -hmm. that we are putting things into our children mm -hmm. and to see Trump and RFK together are gonna join to save the children? Are you kidding me? That was huge. That was massive. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I would imagine if you felt like some people might be crying when RFK comes out and shakes Trump's hand and, mm -hmm. and endorses him, was... part of those tears may have been the number of families who have been dealing with, whether it's autism mm -hmm. or other, uh, other illnesses related to what we have ingested, mm -hmm. but they've not been heard. Mm -hmm. The healthcare industry couldn't hear them. The legislators wouldn't hear them. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones that are dealing with, on a day in, day out basis, right. loved ones, especially children, mm -hmm. who have, whether it's ADHD, autism, you name it, and there's very little help. Okay, they tell you how to treat the symptoms, they give you some behavioral tips, mm -hmm. and they give you some more medication. Oh yeah. But where in the heck did this come from? Yeah. yeah. Where did it come from? And some of it's coming from big pharma or the big food industry. Well, almost everybody knows my age. And the fact that in 1951, my father was a heroin addict. And I still today, I had major massive surgery and they reconstructed almost every part of my body. And I was in the operating room eight hours. I came out, um, I had to stay in the hospital because I had some issues. When I came home, they gave me two high-powered drugs. I didn't take either one of them. I took Advil. Mm -hmm. Now, I had been cut from to appetite. I mean, mm -hmm. I'd been cut mm -hmm. and I had been re I'd been reconstructed. Mm -hmm. And I took Advil for 3 days and then I toughed it out. And the doctor kept saying, you won't heal if you don't take these pills. You won't heal if you don't take these mm -hmm. pills. Today, I still have those two full bottles of pills that I got, and I'm going to flush them down the toilet. Of course, they say not to do that because it goes <laughs> in the sewer, so I'll do something else with them. But when I think about that, you know, the average person getting out of the kind of surgery I had would have eaten all the pills, mm -hmm. taken all the pills, and then 20% of those people would have become addicted to painkillers. Yes. 
So the doctors are doing their job because they want us to heal. And so they give us what it takes to make us heal. When I believe God gave us what it takes to make us heal. Mm -hmm. God gave us the peace and the, the feeling of comfort. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I hurt, but I just kind of took it easy, took my time mm -hmm. and I healed, right. I healed. And I had a hip replacement last year and they were just trying to, uh, they gave me all these uh, drugs and things, and I, I took them for one day, and I was done. Yeah, right. Yeah. That, that's all I, you know, and I only took it because I didn't want to get a blood clot or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. But, yeah, they just try to, they try to push it down you. Sure. I, I mean, it, sure. it's all a big money business. Exactly. Right. It's all about follow the dollar, follow the dollar. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to share some photos with y'all, and some of these came from uh, Bay's Facebook page. Some of them came from different places, but we just <laughs> want to share these photos. And we want to talk a little bit about what we are seeing in America today. And this is one of the things that I'm so excited about. We looked at a nutty buddy, which might be addicted to him. You, I'll admit that. Love mm -hmm. him, love him, love him. Loved him <laughs> since a child. And there's a lot of talk now about the chemicals that are put into products to keep them on the shelf for 60 days, to keep them, you know, um, from melting down, to keep them from doing things. And if you go to YouTube and you check out what happens to a Nutty Buddy, it just, it is so full of chemicals. I love <laughs> Nutty Buddies. I mean, I still have some in the freezer. Love them, we'll mm -hmm. eat them, I promise you. But I wonder, because we look at the contents of our food, mm -hmm. and so RFK has spent a lot of time, a lot of yes. energy, and certainly a lot, of, a lot of dollars trying to pass something that will make us look at what are they putting in our food. So make America healthy again. Is yes. that not just a yes. great idea? Yes. Make America healthy yes. again. How many of us know somebody in our family who's died of cancer? And when we look at what they've done to their bodies, and you know, my grandparents, now this, this is so precious because today is the anniversary that 13 people lost their lives in Afghanistan mm -hmm. because of a failed pullout by the Biden-Harris administration. The last person to sign off on this was Joe Biden and Kamala was there promoting and in the room with him as this happened. Yes. This is that day when President Trump was, um, you know, honoring our military. We don't do that anymore. We, we don't support them anymore. We don't protect them anymore. We're not giving them what they need. But under President Trump's reign, we did. And um, I hope that we get back to that again. So, and we've got, this is, to me, this is when I just started bawling and boo-hooing <laughs> and I was just so excited because I remember I was almost that close to Robert Kennedy Sr. Wow. So close the day of Martin Luther King's funeral. And, and I'll tell you, there's never been a day in my life that I won't remember with love and gratitude that I was honored to be there. 35,000 people showed up in Arizona, which has been a blue mm -hmm. state for a while, but I believe it's red today. <laughs> I hope that it's Turning red that today. Way. <laughs> yes, I hope that it's red today. Mm -hmm. But 35,000 people, and you talk about rocking the house, they rocked the house. Mm -hmm. And, and to see, you know, we have, we have a combination of, and that, that, that is what was happening the moment I got the phone call and my kids said, he's okay, he's okay, don't, he's okay. And, and thank God he was okay, but how close that was. And he has said it over and over and over, what it meant to turn and look at that graph to save his life. Right, yeah. To save his life, to talk mm -hmm. about, what is happening in America. And um, yeah, I mean, we are women. Okay, you're, you're single, you have worked in the um, retail. retail industry all of your life. Yes. So you see people of every creed, color, national <laughs> origin, you name it, every single day. Yes, every day. I've worked in television 18 mm -hmm. years. I've worked in real estate 38 years. Mm -hmm. I owned a trucking company for all those years and I saw America through the windshield of a big truck. I saw America at a, at a truck stop when drivers looked and said, oh my gosh, fuel is up to $1.89. Now it's up to $6 a <laughs> gallon. You know, I mean, I've been there through all of this and I've seen it. You raised mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. in North Georgia and you think about, did you prepare your children for what they were gonna go away and, and be involved in? Did you protect them or did you prepare them? Uh, well, yeah, I, I did protect them. Okay. We tried to. Um, mm -hmm. I, I recognized early on that uh, I felt like they needed to be in a Christian school. Mm -hmm. I, I did homeschool them for a while as well. They were in public school and I homeschooled for a while. 
Uh, and then I sent them to a Christian school here in mm -hmm. LJ, mm -hmm. North Georgia Christian Academy. Right. And um, because I wanted them to have a firm foundation. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I protected them, but at the same time, we, we took them to a lot of places that we, you know, from time to time, and we insisted that we needed to travel with them in mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. different places and let them see that we don't all eat cornbread. We don't mm -hmm. all, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. you know, we not everybody looks the way we look. Mm -hmm. Not everybody talks the way we talk. And as we were doing that, talking to them about, okay, you know, when we're in this area, you know, yeah, that's what happens. Don't mm -hmm. you don't have to stare mm -hmm. at it. You know right. that. Right. Just being aware. Be aware of where you are and and how to act when you're in different situations. Mm -hmm. So yes, I protected them, but also we tried to lay a firm foundation so that they were aware mm -hmm. and that they could. I didn't raise my children. I said this the other day to a uh, to someone whose child had just graduated from high school, and I know that's a that's a tough milestone mm -hmm. for parents mm -hmm. to let go especially if you've been close to your children, mm -hmm. you know, you're a good parent. And I said, well, look, uh, that yeah, it's tough, but we don't raise them to turn pale in a basement, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, raising, right. I'm not raising hot house chickens or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted my kids to be able to go out and to do whatever it is God created them to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't do things that I raised them to do. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Yeah. Um, they come through me, but I'm not supposed to have my thumb on them a the whole time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I don't. Um, so, and I, I chose to stay at home with my kids, not because I think that I'm better or anything, but that was what I felt like I needed to do. And in some ways, part of that was to teach me how to be able to step back and, and serve. Mm -hmm. Step back mm -hmm. and serve. And I wasn't getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, you know, the old devil gets in your ear and going, you're not even getting paid for this. <laughs> you're not, yeah. You know, you know you, <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff. But that was, that was a lesson I had to learn. You know, you and I were raised in yeah. the generation of we were supposed to go chase that, whatever that was, we were supposed to mm -hmm. go chase it. We're mm -hmm. as good as man, that mm -hmm. kind of, you know, and we mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. But so we had, and so I think that was part of the reason why I had to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm glad that everything's worked out the way it did. Um, but it gave me a perspective on um, our families and it, somebody has to serve the family, mm -hmm. okay? Somebody's got to be there, and so many people. Mm -hmm. You're one, Melinda. I mean, you're. I know that you've gotten your eyes and ears peeled for your parents. Mm -hmm. I know that you're mm -hmm. on alert mm -hmm. just because, right? Yeah, right. And so, so many people are juggling one, two jobs, mm -hmm. three jobs, mm -hmm. and they've got their eyes and their ears peeled for either their children, mm -hmm. or they're having to help raise their grandchildren mm -hmm. because of drug mm -hmm. epidemic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or They've got their parents that, you know, that's a lot on our society right now mm -hmm. is to have that, to have those real heartfelt burdens. We're to look after our families. Mm -hmm. So I, that, that was my journey is, mm -hmm. is to be in that situation where I took on part-time jobs, either working in private schools, public schools, part-time, or teaching piano lessons mm -hmm. or working for a church. So... I've been very blessed that every mm -hmm. area that I've worked in, I've been, a, I've seen the better side of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you can see ugly sides of people oh, yeah. in Christian, <laughs> in Christian institutions, but for the most part, mm -hmm. I've seen the better side of people, and that's probably to make me a better person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they said the other day they tried to teach me how to play pickleball, and they said, "Well, we've got a swear jar." And so, <laughs> <laughs> there are certain words I admit that God still knows I like them. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> but, uh, oh but yeah, I mean, I, not to go off on a tangent like that, but we need to be, we need to have a healthy enough society financially to mm -hmm. allow people to make those decisions mm -hmm. that either A, I need to be at home with a child who's sick, that maybe they don't need to be in a school right now, mm -hmm. and I need to be able to make that decision, or I want to be able to help my, with my parents. 
and not have such a financial burden when I'm looking, okay, you've burdened. got your pet peeves of what you look for in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I've got my pet. My mm -hmm. pet is butter. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. Okay. I only buy it on sale and I buy it in bulk and freeze it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I refuse to pay the regular yeah. price and it doesn't matter if I wanted to make a pound cake and I'm out of butter. I'm not mm -hmm. paying that price. Forget it. It ain't right. happening. And I, I, so you watch it every time yeah. you go in. So yeah. that's my item. What uh -huh. is it? Oh, you know, uh, yeah. and if, yeah. like you said, Ingles, that's, that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite places, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. I said, like, okay, well, okay. I've got my card with yeah. me. I got to grab yeah. it. Put yeah. it in the freezer, as you yeah. said, you know. Yeah. Can you believe I am paying sometimes up to six bucks mm -hmm. for butter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of build back better? Yeah. Let's do something yeah. about the butter. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got you. It's all about the butter. Yeah. It's all well, about the butter, <laughs> Biden well, and, and Harris. And two of the things that people need to listen to, and this really scares me about America. Number one, I hear occasionally, well, there's no point in voting because they're going to cheat anyway. Uh -oh. Well, we want to share a little video now. And it does show that there are problems now. Because I'm the old one in the bunch, I'll just say we used to vote paper ballots. That's the way I think we ought to vote. We used to vote one day. That's the way mm -hmm. I think we ought to vote. You can do the write-in if you have it documented, if you're an elderly person and you can't get out and vote, then right. you can do that. But all these illegal votes that came in last time with the box full, the box full, the box full, and we've laughed. There's a joke going around about, oh my God, they've already fixed 500,000 with Biden's name on it and he's not even <laughs> running. Now they've got to redo them. Aww. That's not funny, but it's probably the truth. Mm -hmm. And so I worry, my, my, my two greatest worries about this election are that people that I know and love have said, well, don't you want a woman for president? No. Well, don't you want, don't you think it's time? No, yeah. no, I don't. No, I want a strong male figure that the world can look up to. I don't want a giggling, cackling woman. No, no, if you ran for president, you and I would make a terrific team and we'd make <laughs> people would. laugh, but we wouldn't be worth the crap as president. Thank you. <laughs> we would not be Thank worth you. the crap. We could make y'all laugh all day right. long. We could encourage you, we could support you. I don't want to be nothing except little old me right. and you want to be little old you yes. and we want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. But no, we don't want to run for any kind of, no, 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 no. The other thing that really, really scares me, and we're going to show this because we have a little clip that Bay, and tell me the lady who, Amy gave you this. Tell me oh, about this. Uh, Amy, this is the, about the ballots, right? right. This is from uh, Amy Creamer and Women for America First. Um, so. At one point, we had a, a push for paper ballots, mm -hmm. and I know there have been several statewide pushes for ba paper ballots, but our, our point was a little different in that, hear me, we believe that you cannot read that QR code on that paper, what they call ballot, which is basically a receipt, no different than what they hand you at Kroger mm -hmm. or Ingalls, mm -hmm. okay? That's a receipt, mm -hmm. and we can't read that QR code. So I don't know if that QR code matches the names on the, my receipt or not, mm -hmm. okay? So that was our point, is that we needed to address that aspect of the balloting process. Mm -hmm. That's why we needed to go back to paper ballots. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say this, have you ever been to a grocery store before where something rang up at a different price and you take it back to the clerk and this clerk, oh, I'm sorry, we changed the price on that, but it didn't get programmed into the machine. Melinda, you yes. can't help that. You mm -hmm. can't help no, it retail. Happens, that it happens, happens in it retail does too. Happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. doesn't it happen? Computer glitches. Do you yes. think that it's possible that that QR code on the receipt, that paper receipt that mm -hmm. you put into the little scanner machine and they show you it went up by <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> and you think that, that that made you feel better? Yeah. Because here's the thing. When you get home with a bill of goods and you compare it to what they said they were going to do for you, to mm -hmm. what's not in your pockets and what's not in your hands anymore, we're going we're gonna to need to go back to those paper ballots oh, yeah. yes. where oh, yeah, you I know agree. exactly what was marked and you know exactly who next time not to vote for or who to, who to put back into office. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my rant. And that's but it. that was the aspect, Women mm -hmm. for America First, Amy and her daughter, Kylie Creamer, 
um, are the founders of that organization, and we had a push for uh, paper ballots. So okay. that's the so we want to be verified. This. I mean, that's the most yeah. important. Yeah. Verify yeah. it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to share this with y'all, and just look at who's on it and who's talking about it, y'all. I continue to think that our voting machines are too vulnerable. For researchers have repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tempering. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switched votes from one candidate to another. The biggest seller of voting machines is doing something that violates Cybersecurity 101, directing that you install remote access software, which would make a machine like that, you know, a magnet for fraudsters and hackers. These voting machines can be hacked quite easily. You could easily hack into them. It makes it seem like all these states are doing different things, but in fact, three companies are controlling this. It is the individual voting machines that some pose, that pose some of the greatest risk. There are a lot of states that are dealing with antiquated machines right, which are vulnerable to being hacked. Workers were able to easily hack into an electronic voting machine. It was possible to switch votes. Forty-three percent of American voters use voting machines that researchers have found have serious security flaws, including back doors. We know how vulnerable now our systems were. We know, I know that hackathon that took place last year where virtually every machine was broken into fairly quickly. I actually held a demonstration for my colleagues here at the Capitol um, where we brought in um, folks who before our eyes hacked election machines, um, those that are not, those that are being used in many states. Aging systems also frequently rely on unsupported software like Windows XP in 2000 which may not receive regular security patches and are thus more vulnerable to the latest methods of cyber attack. In a close presidential election they just need to hack one swing state or maybe one or two or maybe just a few counties in one swing state. I'm very concerned that you could have a hack that finally went through. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? up the first down. There he goes up the middle. He'll be cut down at the 20. He's into the end zone for a fan and rebel score. Catches it in stride. He'll go to the end zone. Breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, 
Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. y'all who don't know, the voice you heard doing the national anthem is this beautiful lady sitting to my left, <laughs> Bay Cagle. How many times during that rally experience did you sing the national anthem? Oh my goodness. Sometimes twice a day and um, well we covered about 20 states. So I've seen you in Virginia doing it. I've seen you all across the nation mm -hmm. singing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time that you didn't see reverence from the crowd that you were there no. with? Always reverence. Always. I, and I was impressed with every rally that we stopped. And these would just be little organic, just pulling people together. We're going to have us a Trump bus mm -hmm. rally. Um, the people would the people would meet us as we came off the bus and a lot of them would have tears in their eyes. We need to pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the kind yeah. of people they were. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we never had any violence at all mm -hmm. until um, I think it was um, the evening maybe before we pulled into um, Washington DC on January the 6th. So that would have been January the 5th or the 4th one. but. We were in Franklin, Tennessee, and that was a very large rally. We were right on the square. There's mm -hmm. a sort of a roundabout there, mm -hmm. and a uh, lot of great people, good energy, and um, but there was a, a fella. I would say that he was probably a, a little mental, a little mental Ill, illness or something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so he had. I'm going to pronounce this wrong. A Molotov cocktail. Cocktail. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was going to throw that into the crowd. And um, fortunately, we had some awesome security mm -hmm. team members, mm -hmm. and they saw what was going on, and they chased him down. And um, and in the midst of them chasing him down, one of the security guys got his foot rolled over by a, a car that was, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the way. But that was the really the only only incident that we had. Mm -hmm. Now you think about that. We were going 
from, from California, from west coast to east coast, mm -hmm. and we also went up to Minnesota and mm -hmm. came back through the heartland, mm -hmm. and that was the only incident. Mm -hmm. And um, some of these people that we saw at these different rallies, they were headed to mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. whether it was for December the 12th or whether it was for January the 6th. Mm -hmm. They were headed to Washington, D.C. And um, so for us to say, for anybody to say that that was, that was violent, there was violence there, but that was a different brand of people. Those oh, were yeah. not the people that, that, that I'm just telling you, I'm yeah. eyewitness to it. Those, yeah. those people that were with or around us that we ever met, and whether it was in Kentucky or Minnesota or Iowa, God bless America is mm -hmm. all I can say. Those mm -hmm. people were the, they were the face of America, mm -hmm. I'm here to tell mm -hmm. you. That's right. And uh, I'm serious when I say they would meet us. And these, some of these people were homegrown, corn-fed, and a lot of these people were from uh, Cuba, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially when we started out in Miami. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Or yeah. Uh, Vietnamese people. Right that followed us everywhere we went. Uh, they were at Trump rallies. Mm -hmm. And they've experienced for sure the face of communism. Right. And the first right. rally I did, the women said, we have to pray for America. Mm -hmm. We've heard these messages in Cuba before. Right. We know what communism is. That's this right. is communism. Right. Okay. I have a German friend who says every single day she prays for America and prays that President Trump gets back in because she lived through that too. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's the real deal. And when I say that I'm scared, I'm, I'm not just scared, I'm terrified that America will miss the mark with this because mm -hmm. somebody's going to want to vote for a woman because she's a woman. How stupid right. is that? Right. Going to want to vote for her because she's of black origin or whatever. Mm -hmm. Going to want to vote for her because she's Indian, whatever. Whatever is about America, right. and it is it is the combination of J.D. Vance, you think about Donald John Trump and RFK. Okay, Vance, what are the odds of a man who was raised by a grandmother mm -hmm. who had 19 <laughs> loaded guns in her house because <laughs> she had to protect her family from the deep woods of Kentucky to the, to the hills mm -hmm. of Ohio, this man is going to be our vice president, mm -hmm. and I get cold chills mm -hmm. talking about him, thinking mm -hmm. about him. There couldn't have been a better selection. No, there could so not much. have been a better selection. Right. He can speak to you, he can speak to me, he can speak to the ditch digger, he can speak to the senators, he can speak to anybody, and he knows what he's talking about. He raised, yeah. he was raised on Meals on Wheels when yes. his grandmother split the food and with that's him. What I, that's <laughs> another thing I want people to tune into if they are the least bit riding on the fence about who should I vote for. J.D. Vance grew up in Ohio, still Company, mm -hmm, steel mm -hmm, town mm -hmm. where in the 90s thank you Bill Clinton mm -hmm. your your cool little NAFTA idea right there oh, yeah. gutted those cities yeah. now I was mm -hmm. in uh, Youngstown Ohio in March at a particular meeting mm -hmm. and a fellow stood up and he said America at large is experiencing now what we dealt with back in the 90s. Right. He says in the 90s we had we had jobs here mm -hmm. in Youngstown. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And he says, but you see how it's gutted. Mm -hmm. And he says, well now it's happening to all over America. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. ideas of sending our jobs overseas, mm -hmm. he says now it's coming home to roost. And let's bring this down to a local level. Okay, in the in the marble mines right now, mm -hmm. where we used to have three, four hundred employees, right. okay, Lots of things, you know, yeah. a lot of this is, has to do with innovation and you can do more right. with mm -hmm. less, right? Mm -hmm. But now we had gone to, uh, let's say, 80 people. Mm -hmm. It went down to 50 people. Mm -hmm. I just learned this weekend, now one of our marble companies has been bought out again and they're mm -hmm. down to 14 people. Now, we've gone from the marble industry, which in the, what, 30s, 40s, and 50s was employing Kept an us entire going. community. Yes. Yeah. Huge. And, and just little by little, you're whittling away for mm -hmm. jobs mm -hmm. in the well, community. Well, and we could go to Levi and Fannin County, H.D. Lee and Jasper, mm -hmm. Pickens Footwear in Jasper. We yep. lost 800. We lost 800 factory jobs just in the Jasper yes. area. Uh, the rubber plant is doing a third of what they used to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are looking at an area that we were served by people who went to the right. textile mills. Yes, they, right. You know. Don't we all remember the, the sound and the, the smell of Pickens footwear? Because those yeah. those tennis shoes were made locally. Yes. You could smell it in the air. Yes. 
Yeah. So think about that, the number of sewing plants or whatever mm -hmm. plants mm -hmm. where your grandparents worked mm -hmm. or your aunt or your uncle worked, not everybody wants mm -hmm. to go get an MBA. In 19, some people right. just want to go earn a decent In 1980, living. we always did the uh, Christmas dinner for H.D. Lee, 435 employees, mm -hmm. 435 employees. That's, they all went to Mexico. Every job went to Mexico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've, we've got to get the word out. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I tell y'all all the time, you know how I feel, you know how I vote. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified. And I'm asking anybody who is, who is truly not sure, please, please look at the record. Mm -hmm. Please, please look at the future of America. Please, please. Do not vote because she's a woman. Do not right, vote right. because she's Absolutely. black. Do not vote. Vote on the record of what we have seen. Mm -hmm. If I didn't want to really stir up something, I would disclose the difference in my income then and my difference in my income now. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so different. Right. And, and, and so many people are facing that. So please, oh let's gosh. come together. Let's, let's educate ourselves. Well, okay, the border czar. She was the border czar. Harris was the border czar, okay? I met people on the border where the private funded border wall was put up by Steve Bannon and mm -hmm. uh, Cole Fodge was right. the other person's name. I was on that border. I met those people who were sick and tired of having illegal aliens come through their backyard, mm -hmm. come through their businesses, tear mm -hmm. up their fences. Yes. Mm -hmm. They were excited about having that particular border wall, that mm -hmm. section, put up. Okay? Mm -hmm. Can you say Lake and Riley? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, every day. Okay. And, and the thing Friday that yeah. impacted me more than anything was the mom of the 12 year old who was raped and murdered by yeah. two Venezuelans who came across the border, raped and murdered and disfigured a 12 year old. Did that not make you cry? Oh, no, that made oh, me yeah. stand and cry. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That and that's what cry. it's about. We've got yes. to get back to loving America. We've got to get back to caring about our country. Yes. I don't care about a female president. I don't care about what nationality, what color, what flavor. What, I don't care about Do any of that stuff. Do you care about mean tweets? No, no. mean tweets don't phase so, me. I laugh at them. Okay, so <laughs> here we go again. Yeah. You don't have a video of me for January 6th because as soon as I came back home, I couldn't talk about it mm -hmm. because we didn't know whether or not the FBI was going to be weaponized against every one of us that had any affiliation whatsoever mm -hmm. with just being in Washington, D.C., exercising our, here's the term, freedom of speech. Right. So, no, I didn't post anything else about that because I was afraid. You want to know mm -hmm. why I was afraid? Because when I got home, people that I knew mm -hmm. and who knew me were afraid to be around me. That's crazy. All right? That I crazy. had I had managers from local grocery stores who were trolling me on Facebook that turned into a lawsuit. Oh my god. I had locals who I had worked out with before in gyms who didn't want to be around me anymore because they heard that I was there. That's Do crazy. Do we not have the right to exercise our our ability to to speak out? Mm -hmm. Let me answer that question for you. Right. No. Not under the current regime, we do not. Nope. And under Harris, we would have even less. Mm -hmm. I will take a mean tweet any day. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. the right to tweet. Mm -hmm. I had the right to be where I was. I mm -hmm. wasn't breaking any laws. Mm -hmm. I don't want everything that I say and do to be scrutinized by some bureaucrat somewhere right. on high right. or behind a curtain. Let me say behind a behind curtain. Behind a curtain, yeah. Yeah. And and I don't think anybody that is on this fence right now who think, well, gee, I'd like to have a female president. Let me tell you something. A female president is that's nothing. What you need is somebody who has proven that they will stand up for your right mm -hmm. to free speech, to re to religion, to carry a weapon if you need to. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. If somebody's mm -hmm. demonstrated they will stand up for those things that's it. that are in our Bill of Rights. That's it. Yeah, it's more that's important it. it's more important to vote for the person who's gonna do the best job and you know, and do it yes. right. And and stands behind their principles yes. and stands for the people. Because right now the you know, I, I watched the whole DNC thing. I could barely watch it, but I did watch it. 
And all they, you know, all they did was, you know, bash Trump and all that and talk about how they were going to help the middle class. Well, what they're doing that with the, with the uh, price gouging and all that, that's not helping the middle no. class mm -hmm. and the inflation. And, and they, they always do the same things. If you notice right now, the gas prices are going down. They'll mm -hmm. probably stay down oh, pretty yeah. good before the election. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the election's over, boom, they go back up. Mm -hmm. sure. Right. Sure. Well, here's you, here's you a line that RFK gave us that I mm -hmm. think was priceless. Perfect. He said, you don't need a good policy as long as you hate Trump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you didn't hear Kamala Harris line no. out any policy. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to de deal with the open border. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to deal with our economy. She doesn't want to deal with inflation. She doesn't want to deal with health care industry. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to deal with those things. Don't, won't even bring it out of her mouth. But how many times did she talk about big bad ugly Trump, mm -hmm. orange, mad, mm -hmm. orange mm -hmm. man bad. Mm -hmm. How many times did she bring it up? I think mm -hmm. over the end course of the X number of days, it was 400 times she brought up oh, Trump. Yeah. Yeah. And I think she brought up the border maybe three times mm -hmm. or inflation maybe and, three and times. And that was her main job. Yeah. And what about if you don't, uh, she says she's never been to the border. That would be like us working for a company and we have a job and we never go visit. We, we never go right. into that building and work. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, you have to go That's to your it. job right. site. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah, you should you should get to know the whatever it is that you're supposed to be mm -hmm. absolutely the czar of. You should mm -hmm. kind of get to know it. Yeah, yeah you That's should it. own it. You know, yeah. And you're held accountable. For but that. she laughed yeah. and said, "But I haven't been to Germany either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hadn't been to Europe. Had been really? to Europe. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, today today is a program. I hope I hope and pray that you will listen. You will pay attention and you will vote your conscience and you will not vote for something because that's the way we've always done it. We've always made mistakes, but mm -hmm. we have the possibility mm -hmm. of correcting our mistakes. I've made a million mistakes in my life and I will proudly cast my vote for Donald John Trump and J.D. Vance. I will proudly cast my vote for them. Bing. And I honestly, um, <laughs> I don't know um, how much you research and the truth you know, but the truth <laughs> is we have to make America strong and together yeah. we can do that. And as mm -hmm. women, as women, as women, we can do this. So yes. join us and join everybody who cares about America and let's go to the polls and let's reelect our president, Donald John Trump. Yes, yes.